Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to this Coliseum. So, let's keep going from where we left off last time. We're using the com computer here. Okay, torch kind of went away for a second there. Uh, but we couldn't see much of it. But there is still a room that we have to check over here. We didn't really, at least for now. So let's see. Skis with slipstream printed on a laminated top layer. Okay. Steel rotor blades bearing a slipstream logo. Conceptualization. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? Our oh, strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed house sad. Uh, or oh, they're just speculation. Uh, let's see. Let's get a question. Uh, hmm. You don't know anything for sure. Well, what a strange leap, strange leap of your imagination. Reality is ruthless. Alright. Oh, we have something here. And it's a production schedule. Filament memory. It's worth 50. So it's very worth picking up. Uh, oh wait, it's the thing for the for the computer, right? Filament memory. Uh Keep like a uh, cross, uh, crisscross of filaments feel a little fragile in your hands in the thicker structure. Uh, yeah, that's for the, yeah, for uh, use for the radio computer. True. Okay, so, I mean, is there everything that is inside here? Looks like that. So let's go back to the radio computer for a second. I'm thinking that maybe now we can actually use it. Uh, maybe I need to grab in my hand the thing. Uh, no, maybe not. I mean, we already have two items. Whoop, where are you going? Uh, oh yeah, insert the production schedule. Okay. And 5 XP, nice. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. So I can remove it if I want, but I can also press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planner magnetic driver. The static gets louder, slowly filling up the bend on hall until a voice picks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good evening, Fortress Accident en Rue de Saint-Gueslain. This is East Insulindian Repeater Station. Uh. Uh, okay, so we are talking about an East Insulindian Repeater Station. Okay, somebody is uh, another, on another one of these things and is listening in. Apparently an old lady, as far as it looks. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. You mean that glowing thing and put it inside? Yes. Is that the production schedule? Uh, yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course you wouldn't have a password. That's why there is a human administrator involved. Password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? My birthday? <laughs> this police please open this thing. Uh, hmm. Eh, police. The voice resides. I'm contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder fortress accident. Without filling a warrant with Lintel, I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we're not doing that, unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice in the machine asks again. She sounds cold in dump air. Uh, can you give me a hint? Nope. Okay. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Is it my birthday? Still no. I don't know the password. Received. I'll register this login attempt. Don't worry, parcels have a way of turning up sooner or later. Protest accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Uh, password. Uh, what did you call me, Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been, has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with Studios Care. And more experience, nice. Fortress Accident SCA produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. 
uh, what is the intera interactive call-in radio game? The study draws her response. Any other questions? You hear her ask with the connection uh, when the connection finally improves. Um, what are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. I'm 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. The lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Okay. Uh, Yvonne, my partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. <laughs> okay, that's funny. They're merely cautious, says the old lady. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulindian station. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater in the East Insulindian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, some static. And then, I'm sitting in my cubicle surrounded by a wall of radius. Now please tell me if there is anything else I can do for this accident. That's all for now, I suppose. Thank you and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Uh, alright, alright. Uh, can I print something? Nothing happens. Okay, let's keep this thing for now. I want to keep it. Uh, just in case we want to sell it and we don't find like any, any... Oh, we can talk with him. Okay. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for the damages yet. You should take care of that then. But I don't have the money. True. Uh, let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the streets. We'll figure something out. Uh, what did he just update? Try negotiating, to be negotiating with cafeteria manager. Uh, well, we already did negotiate, but I guess we're gonna do it again. Uh, but I really wanted to see the end of this part, though. Uh... Uh, maybe we can go on a bit more. Um, so there was a part that went up and a part that goes down, I think. Yeah, this goes down into... Yeah, we enter here by mistake the other time. Uh, okay, more money and more magnesium. That's always good. And to real. Okay. And the camera did not go back. Uh, so we have the stairs. We have a bear. It definitely looks like a big bear. Ice bear fridge. Uh, you see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the, bear, uh, the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from his mysterious belly door. Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Okay, well, it's a refrigerator. I don't know why you're grabbing your gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Of course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face bathed uh, in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. I'll take the notes. Uh, okay, so let's first examine one of the wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cell phone, uh, cellophane wrapper. It looks like not. It looks nothing like the fridge. Okay. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. Um, okay, take the note. Item gained. Your pocket, you pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Okay, what is the giant bear shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. So they try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know, says the lieutenant. What an unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing the money to this day. The lieutenant points at the red uh, snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Okay, close the door. Uh, yeah, we have the note that we can interact with. A handwritten note you found from the giant ice bear fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets that were used to secure it to the refrigerator door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? The lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. Read the note. 
Someone has scribbled S. I can't believe the offsite copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. Uh, maybe Kuno? Illiterate ginger kid? You'll find the film into memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home as ASAP. It's important. I'll do it myself if I live in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sally's Law. So there is uh, either the same, uh, either the same filament or another one. Wonder who wrote the notes. Looks like someone from the radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to live in a hurry. Maybe it's because of the entity. I guess we'll never know. Maybe they had to live in a hurry. That's plausible hypothesis. Remind me again. What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer storing its memory. It's like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of those disco one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. Set the production production schedule you found. Only this one is an offsite copy. Okay. Who's the later ginger kid? Really? The lieutenant looks at you, the corner of his mouth curving into a smug green. You don't have a single guess? <laughs> you mean Kuno? 5 XP, nice. Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on a filament memory, even if he doesn't know what to do with it. He'd probably try to pawn it for speed based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know, I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. True. Put that another way. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's interesting. Um, we have something up here. So we have coal, I think. The wall is collapsed, it's inaccessible now. Oh, it's a, it's a wall that collapsed, I see. What do we have here? The central furnace, a thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? It looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It connects to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. The echo is so prominent it's impossible to discern, discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. <laughs> I'm hallucinating, or maybe it's the entity. I hear the murderer of the hangman talking. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Yeah, yeah, this one. Wait, really? He looks up at the ceiling. We should investigate, to see if someone is upstairs. Uh, oh, okay. This is a, this is a talk. White shack. Interesting. Physical instrument. Okay. Uh, smear your hands with coal. Why? Those voices I heard, maybe it's the malignant entity. Pleasant said it lives in a chimney. I keep kick with your foot. I have a feeling that this is gonna take some of our health away, so maybe I won't. Um, okay, maybe it's the entity. You're right, the rooms do look like they're connected, but malignant entities don't exist, at least not the supernatural kind. Always has to be the skeptic, this man. <laughs> uh, okay, smear your hands with coal, I suppose. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin. Sinking into the wrinkles, your hands look ancient. Maybe you could paint something with this coal, leave a cave painting for future archaeologists. No, that would be stupid. Uh, okay, so this is a 42 because we have physical instrument 2. So let's leave it and see if we can increase that chance. Uh, we don't have anything that lowers our physical instrument. Do we have anything that hides our physical instrument? Uh, physique, that's if we drink though, I don't want to drink. Uh, electrochemistry, nope, we don't have anything that increases our... Yeah, this is just stuff to sell or use. Um, damn, okay. Well, let's still try. Yell hello into the furnace. And it's a fail. You muster all your strength and yell, hey, 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 <laughs> okay. You're dehydrated. Hangover throat came from those little more than a dry croak. A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. The chatter from the chimney continue on as before. You seem to have made no impression of whatever's up there. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying, some, uh, trying something up there, okay. 
Hmm, maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Try again later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, what else do we get around here? We get this thing. An ice cream maker, defroster, and unplugged. Okay. There's something here. Something here, something here. Uh, okay. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Ooh, hidden doorway. Okay. Can we go in? I mean, can we? Oh yeah, we can. Okay. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Oh, rifles. Holy. Okay. Okay. Then we have this. A hole in the wall. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Look, there is a hole in the wall. Shine the light on the hidden compartment. Where are we? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those files. He points up at the rifles under the... Oh, look at all those rifles. Points up at the rifles under the ceiling. Must be an old weapon cache. Uh, okay, there is a hole. There is, yes. And there are also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into the into darkness and spider webs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifle scheme. Okay. The lieutenant steps closer, curious. Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine hood stock. In better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. Take the rifle. Oh, we actually get the rifle. Okay. Antique Bell Mark, uh, Magrave rifle. An old, manga, uh, an old Bell Magrave from the Revolution. The lieutenant notes with approval. His eyes are gleaming. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? And we can XP. Nice. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. Okay. Can we actually inspect? It's not a tool. It's an item. Okay, we can either sell it. I wonder if we can use it. Yeah, we cannot put it in our hands, but maybe we'll be able to do something with it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else here. Okay. And there is something here. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Okay. Alright. So, we were looking at here. There were a couple things. Okay, let's see. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Oh, that's a running one. Okay, what is this? Uh, more money and plus health. Yes. Okay, four and five. We're getting quite there with health. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, we have a thing here, we have a thing here, we have a thing here. Let's see. This orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a high cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Uh, crack open the lid. 3%. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tw minus 24 pry bar not strong enough. Holy. Okay. Turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like staring your child or dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. Uh, yeah, we definitely cannot take this one. Um, let's see if we can do something with it. There is a thing here. A breaker box. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Unplug the giant red cable, unplug the black cable. The red leads to the ice bear fridge. Oh, let's unplug the red. Electric sizzle. The room is slightly quieter now. Um, Unplug the black, that would be the freezer here. Mm, maybe we want to unplug it? Something close to you dies off with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? It's black, it's not like, like it's the red one. Uh, because it's black, the color of immeasurable cosmos. I don't know why I unplugged it, I do things without any reason. Um, I mean, I unplugged the red one too, but sure. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. The electric distribution board now has one cable missing. 
Uh, we can plug them both in if we want to. But let's not for now. Okay, there are stairs here. There is something here. Uh, insane mesh tank top plus one drama. Okay. Uh, what would that go on the shirt compartment? I think. Uh, yes, on the shirt. So this gives plus one drama, and this gives plus one conceptualization, but minus one suggestion. On the same creativity see art in the world, and minus one suggestion gets, uh, uh, yeah, gets like counter, uh, countered by something else. Okay. Intercom is running into the breaker box. All right. So there are stairs, but first, let's see if like turning off the thing did something for this. This orange machine is dead still. He has a hand cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it is slowly melting. Oh, okay. So plus two because the machine is unplugged. So we got a bit more uh, of a thing, but still it's a minus 20 for the primer not strong enough. Mm, I wonder if I can use the other tool. Uh, I don't think this this thing we can use actually. Let's try. Uh, try to cramp open the lid. Okay. I mean, it's not saying anything now about the percentage. Slip your fingers under a frozen lid, but the ice is too cold for you to get a good grip. A pry bar would come in handy here. No, this is gonna need something else, some kind of super pry bar. Don't even try to open it with a regular pry bar, you're just wasting your time. If you wanna try again, then you need to have the pry bar in your hand detective. Go pry bar by having the tools. Okay. So, we need to actually put on the pry bar, but it's just that this one is not strong enough. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, well, anything changed in the fridge? We didn't unplug the fridge, keep in mind. Uh, the best eyes are dead and empty. Ice inside the fridge slowly melting. The power has been cut off. Okay, so nothing, I guess. Just, uh, just to power off. Alright. So let's see where the stairs lead. Oh wait, there are more stairs. I almost missed this ones. Something on the ground, 45 real, and whatever this thing is. A cellar window, people's feet shuffling by on the street, so it's just a window. Okay, so we cannot do anything here. Oh, well, it seems like it used to go somewhere, but it definitely doesn't. Okay, let's move. Oh. Oh, it's this door. Ah, so we are outside the wheelings in rags, yeah. Well, it's actually about time to call it a night, as they say, so we may as well close it here and then go into the wheeling and, you know, <laughs> uh, end our day, basically, in the game. So, the episode has also been going on for quite a bit, so I think I'm gonna cut it here. Well, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and... I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.